Welcome back to the CTV News and to the continuation of the interview with Darnie Lebon. The interview is being conducted by Bernard Fannis of Calabash TV. It's easy for somebody to hijack uh, an organization. Yeah. They can form an organization yeah. for their own ends and so on. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's very quick for somebody to say, oh, this person is being political. As, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. as if being political is, mm -hmm. is, is something that, you, know, that, mm -hmm. that you, you, you demonize and so on. Right. Um, but how do we build that? Because I've heard quite a bit about the civil society and so on. Mm -hmm. How do you build civil society? And we must expect that mm -hmm. some members will be political. If of you course. support a political party, you have a particular course. view. But how do we deal with it? Do we have the maturity enough for us to be able to handle that? Do we have the maturity enough? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> the process of building society and organizations, um, it's not difficult, Bernard. It's, it's something that we did before in the 70s, um, that we spent time um, engaging people, um, having discussions, mm -hmm. finding out what are people's concerns, um, uh, how should I say it? massaging people in a way that they're able to think for themselves because too many times we identify problems we ask questions but we don't look past that what is my role right in addressing the issue what is my role in solving the problem it's a way again it comes back to facilitation that we are able to listen to people and nudge them forward in terms of beginning to open up their minds to what are the possibilities, what are the options, and where do I find placement in all of those, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it is that sort of thing. And it, it's, it's about leadership, but not leadership in the sense that, okay, let me, let me take you forward. I know the promised land. Mm -hmm. I have always said that a leader can only move forward as fast as his people mm -hmm. are able to think. And so if you understand that in terms of you trying to get to that ultimate or desirable, it's, it's a parallel of trying to move forward, but at the same time looking to the side and ensuring that your people understand what it is that is at stake, what it is you're trying to do, and spending time to empower them. So how do we stimulate people so that they can think? Bernard, we have a whole block of people in St. Lucia who can't think critically. How can we claim independence and development? I mean, I want to repeat it. We have a whole block of people in this country who cannot think critically. I mean, you watch some of the talk shows, sorry, the, 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 the um, uh, programs on TV where they go out with the mic. And it's really laughable. Mm -hmm. You know, the way people expose their views or they try to explain something or how they understand something. And it's... <laughs> I sit in my living room sometimes and I'm like, wow, what is going on? And we continue to expose these things night after night, not to ourselves, to the world. And saying to the world, this is who we are. You know, and, and what is shameful about it, Bernard? I don't want to knock anybody. But some of the, the, the operatives, in terms of the cameramen or whatever, keep on going back to those same people. You know, as these people represent who we are on Sunwell. Maybe that's a point. I remember Christopher Hunt some years ago with his program, Lucians, all, almost was making the point that this is where we are, St. Lucians. So he went down into the, the Castries River sitting in an old derelict car, driving it to say, look, that's where we are. That's mm -hmm. how we think as St. Lucians. You know, so it's, 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 we, 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 we at a point, Bernard, now where, and before we started the program, we were discussing, and, and you were making the point that, look, we really need to come about with meaningful change in St. Lucia. And you raised the point about opposition, whether we should explore some other way of expressing that unit mm -hmm. in government. Um, I think, you know, we almost at the crossroads in St. Lucia now in terms of, what, 38 years of independence mm -hmm. and beginning to show some sense of meaningful movement forward and meaningful uh, change. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we'll we'll get some more, talk some more about the independence and so on. But right. civil society, I want to just yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Delve with that Are we, yeah. Have we set the expectations a little too high in terms of what a civil society movement is supposed to be? Can it mm -hmm. be a simple thing like um, a parent association taking more responsibility 
a football mm -hmm. team taking more responsibility for things that you have control over. It doesn't have to be you come out and make statements about national policy. Mm -hmm. There's a place for that as well, and you have mm -hmm. a role to play. Even the people on the on those mm -hmm. um, Vox Pop programs that you mm -hmm. spoke about, they have yeah, a voice yeah. as well. Yeah. We have to listen to them, but there mm -hmm. are a lot of other people who have a lot of uh, solid ideas. So mm -hmm. yeah, are we? Because we seem to think that civil society has to be this as this kind of movement mm -hmm. that at a particular level that has to comment on everything political no, and no, so on. Or no. could it be a football team taking responsibility for the football field that it's mm -hmm. playing on? Cleaning it, planting grass around it to make it look yeah. decent and so on. Is it that we have to redefine exactly what we think of thanks, civil society? Thanks for bringing that up because for many people it, 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 it might be seen as something that's elusive, something mm -hmm. that's very complex. Civil society fundamentally has to do with governance mm -hmm. and action. And, um, and change and development, but within the domain of people's control, mm -hmm. right? So it is outside of the realm of government, okay? Um, and if we understand it at that very basic level, yes, I agree with you that a mothers and fathers group can be a civil society, but there must be some fundamentals in mm -hmm. terms of the process of governance, the level of participation, mm -hmm. and um, the extent to which it has the capacity to act or influence right. change within the society and so on. So for me, these are the basic tenets of civil society. It's, it's non-governmental. And, and of course, that was a cliche we used before, the NGO movement. Mm -hmm. um, and I think even in looking at that, we must understand um, the interface with government. I think too many times people tend to, and that is happening increasingly, dismiss government or politicians. Mm -hmm. The fact is they are in a position of authority, they hold the levers of power, so to speak. They have resources available to them. So civil society organizations have to be skillful mm -hmm. in the manner in which they can engage governments, put proposals before government. I often say to people, it's not about making noise. Mm -hmm. It is how you can reduce or translate your th thoughts to two sheets of paper call it a proposal or whatever and submit it and follow up on it you know mm. um, many times we do we initiate we submit things and that's it we expect that that action will just mushroom mm. we have to follow up we have to show a level of aggression in a respect in a respectable manner and um, see it through mm. So that speaks to commitment mm -hmm. and dedication. But definitely, um, the, it shouldn't be re very far removed from mm -hmm. the political directorate because everybody yeah. who is in that position is from a community. Of course. And the people that they, they know. people like us. They, they come from families come from and the same communities. Right. And so on. so right. if the discussion starts at, at that level, it's mm -hmm. easier to convince your member of parliament right. of something on a national scene if right. you engage at a local level. So mm -hmm. we can, you can come to a football match, you can have a discussion of on an issue of course. and start the discussion. So I think part of it, too, mm -hmm. and you can comment on that, is, mm -hmm. is the dialogue. We're not having that kind of civil dialogue at all levels to be able to influence the change I, I don't know if you understand what you are alluding to, Bernard, is the kind of symbiosis, the nexus between the community, the mm -hmm. civil society organization, and the politician who is thrown up or emerged from that same environment, mm -hmm. and the extent to which one can influence the other, and there can be common goals and objectives. So, I mean, we go back in our earlier history in which we had organizations like the NYC that fed into the politics, you know? And so the extent to which that can happen and possibly help to sanitize our politics because you have people who are not just dropping down from the skies and totally, you know, removed from... I mean, we elect some people into office mm -hmm. who are abstract in terms of their, of their history and ability to relate to people. Mm -hmm. They didn't come from there. They just emerged because, well, he was a very good domino player in the community and very popular so we know he'll win the seat you know that sort of thing no link no history in terms of relating to people and and and, and so if we can have that nexus in terms of civil society the presence of civil society and its relationship and the skillfulness of the persons involving that in terms of understanding ultimately the change process and engagement and our politicians and this is important Bernard can be accommodating because mm -hmm. there's something Bernard about the movement from being an ordinary person and making that move into government 
that creates, makes you a different animal, almost a transformation. And I've experienced it, and I don't know that I want to go into specifics mm -hmm. tonight. Maybe I might just have the courage to do it. Um, people who rub shoulders with you and and they get into government and you become a non-entity. And it's a strange kind of feeling because you remember very intimate moments with those people um, and you wonder, but what happened? What happened? And, and if we understand, as I said before, that governance and politics is about people, we shouldn't see those shifts. You know, now we can count certain politicians in our history who have remained the ordinary. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I would venture to mention people like Alan Bowski. Mm -hmm. um, who incidentally is from your community, yes. Bernard, was, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, John Odlum. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, I want to be careful here. Um, uh, George Odlum, mm -hmm. I would venture to see. Um, uh, um, and I think I have to mention Sir John. Mm -hmm. Because we know Sir John as a Prime Minister remained a simple man. I mean, I could have related to Sir John. When Sir John came back into office, 83 years old, you know, he related to me and I related to him. He would call me, hey, Danny, what do you think about that? Have meetings, suggest certain things. He received ideas from me and so on. And that's what we're looking for. But when you have a politician, a Prime Minister, a minister who you can no longer touch, you can no longer relate to. That's the beginning of problems. There is a lot more to cover in this interview. The conversation with Danny LeBorn will continue tomorrow. Next, our exclusive walk through a luxury cruise ship, the Viking Sea. Stay tuned for that.